I'm Chris, you're watching Fragmental. Today I'm going to talk to you about another stunner from Swedoft. It's called Black Rose. Stay tuned. Swedoft are a pretty new niche house based in Sweden and they've been coming out with some very lovely fragrances. Recently, I've been loving Exude. I did a video about that. I can't stop wearing that fragrance at the moment. It is beautiful. So Swedoft did send me a few fragrances to try out. So I've kind of been going through these and when I make these videos, I'm picking out all my favorites really, just because I like a lot of my videos to, to be um, fragrances that I enjoy and I would like to recommend to you as well. Now, I don't know if I ever told you before, but I was once a master perfumer. When I was a kid, we used to get jam jars and fill them with water and then just pick some rose petals and stuff them in and then we would set up a stall on the street and we would sell the, the, the rose fragrance. It was a good business, it was going really well but unfortunately it got to a point where it wasn't sustainable. Even though the overheads were low we kind of ran out of raw materials. Well my next door neighbour bollocked us for stealing all the rose petals. So that one had to come to a stop. Now, Swedoft's attempt at a rose fragrance obviously isn't as good as mine, but Black Rose still does a pretty good job. This was actually named by Dan, who is Fragrance Weirdo on Instagram. One of the best Instagram accounts. Dan is super knowledgeable about fragrances and uh, really knows, <laughs> knows quality. So Dan actually had the opportunity to, to come up with the name for this. So he is responsible for Black Rose. And also uh, a little bit of uh, history behind the, um, the idea behind this fragrance. It is inspired by the legend of the Black Rose, which is said to have existed or exist in Halfetti. It's a myth, but Swedoft wanted to create a fragrance based on the myth of this black rose and they wanted to produce a fragrance that was sensual and dark and seductive. So, what do we have with this fragrance? Well, first of all, let's take a look at the bottle and the notes. Just a short note list on this. There's blue oud, chamomile, incense and damask rose. All right, so I'm going to start off by giving you an idea of the overall scent profile of black rose. And to me, I would describe this as elegant yet simple and airy so it's not a heavy fragrance at all it does have a certain richness to it but it's not a heavy oppressive type of really dark fragrance so when you spray it first of all it opens up with a rose oud combo and a little swirl of smoke maybe that's coming from the incense i'm not sure but just seem to get this little hint of smoke it's not a smoky fragrance but maybe just a little hint of it there and the oud here is Quite a refined and clean type of oud, more like the oud that you would find in something like Tom Ford's oud wood, although I would say that I think it does smell more natural than the oud accord that is used in oud wood, and it's definitely not the stinky type of oud at all. So the notes list blue oud, and I was looking into this, and apparently real blue oud is found in a handful of trees in the depths of the jungle and it is extremely extremely rare and most people won't ever get the chance to smell that in their lifetime so i think if that was being used in this fragrance it would be a fragrance that was worth thousands of pounds what uh, can also be done to uh, create a blue oud is regular oud oil from Asia can be used and then chamomile extract is added and the chamomile extract actually turns the oud oil a blue colour. My guess is that that is the process used in this fragrance judging by what this one costs. The rose here is also beautiful. I would describe it as maybe a slightly jammy rose um, but it's certainly it's got an edge to it. It does have um, almost a spiciness to it, but it's definitely not a feminine leaning rose. This to me is a, a, a very masculine type of rose. So overall, the fragrance to me leans a little more masculine than feminine. And I'm quite enjoying this because I, I early on when I was discovering fragrances, I did write rose off quite early on because I smelled some very popular rose based fragrances uh, like Portrait of a Lady. And I felt 
that was a little too feminine. It smelled a bit too old lady-ish for me. Maybe uh, if I smelled it again now, I've not smelled it for a while, but maybe I would feel differently about it. But I just saw rose as um, a, quite a feminine note in fragrances and it was something that I kind of stayed away from. But smelling fragrances like this have completely changed my, my mind on that. You know, I'm, I'm very confident now that um, you can get a masculine rose fragrance. And I would also say that the rose and the oud in here just seem to be blended with a lightness of touch, uh, both quite delicately done. They just blend together seamlessly. It's difficult to know where the oud ends and the rose begins. I'll be smelling this fragrance and I'll think, oh, okay, that's, that's the oud accord I'm picking up on. And then I'll go, actually, maybe it wasn't, maybe that was the, the rose accord. So I think, you know, they just, they just fuse and blend perfectly. I don't think the oud stands out separately to the rose. I think, like I said, it's just a really nicely blended fragrance. Also get a nice warmth and depth from this fragrance. I guess the warmth is, is coming from the wood in here and the depth and perhaps the incense is also adding to that. And this just slight little bit of smokiness that I get as well. Um, but I wouldn't describe this as a very rich, very dense fragrance. Like I said, it's quite light and airy and very easy to wear, but it still manages to have a great performance. When I say light and airy, don't think that that means that people aren't going to smell this off you. I think this projects really nicely. I'll go into the performance uh, very shortly. The other thing to mention is that I think this is quite a linear fragrance. I, I do think that the rose and the oud has a little more sharpness, maybe a little more spiciness to it in the opening and then perhaps it just smooths out a little bit. But generally, I find that this balance of the rose oud just goes all the way through the fragrance from beginning to end. But, you know, I'm absolutely fine with that. So overall, it comes across as a very refined, high quality, extremely classy fragrance. And there's also an addictive quality to this. I never thought I'd say that about a rose fragrance, but when I spray this on, I kind of keep going into to smell it on my skin. It does have that lovely quality that you want to just keep coming back to. So hopefully those around you will, will have the same experience. They want to just keep coming back to you and smelling you. Now it's time for the Fragmin. So in terms of performance, it's great. I wouldn't describe this as beast mode, but I would say it's excellent performance. So I'm getting around two to three hours of a projection that I would estimate to, to maybe be a little bit further than arm's length. I guess that is just a, an estimation. Obviously that's hard to measure. Uh, and longevity is great. I get eight to 10 hours. And throughout the life of this fragrance, after that initial slightly bigger projection, I'm still getting wafts. I, I still feel like it's one of those fragrances that I get those lovely wafts for the whole time I'm wearing it. It doesn't just die down to be a skin scent, so you only smell it when you're going close to your skin. It does seem to, to drift up to, to my nose, so that is fantastic. I would say that it's a unisex fragrance, absolutely. I know I said that perhaps it leans a little more masculine, but I would still classify this as a fragrance that is very easy to wear by women and it's versatile as well i'd say it's light enough to wear in warmer months but there's enough density to it to to wear in the colder months so personally i'd be very happy to wear this all year round for me i think this would excel as a formal occasion fragrance or some occasion where i'm dressed up and i'm quite smart just because it comes across as so classy and sophisticated let's talk about the prices if you wanted to buy this direct from swedoff then for this 100 ml bottle it's 174 euros if you want the next size down that's 50 ml that is 125 euros or if you want to go for the 30 ml size that's coming out at 72 euros they do ship to the uk as well but if you are based in the uk and you wanted to purchase it then bloom perfumery are also selling this and all of swedoff's uh, other products and the great thing is that Bloom also offer little one mil samples of all the Sweet Oft uh, fragrances. So I think they're about five pounds. So if you feel like trying any of these then and you're in the UK, Bloom is probably your best bet. I'll leave links to Sweet Oft and to Bloom in the description below. To sum up, Black Rose has to be one of my favorites from Sweet Oft. It's an absolute stunner. If only I'd had a bit of blue oud to include in my own fragrance when I was younger, I think I could have made something almost 
as good as this one. So there are my thoughts on Black Rose from Swedoft. I hope that's all the information you needed to know. If I've not mentioned things, then please do ask me in the comments down below. And also leave me a comment if you've tried this. I'd love to hear from anybody out there who, uh, who has tried this fragrance or anything from Swedoft. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, keep tuning into FM, keep smelling good, and I'll see you in the next one.